to start at the outset i would like to join my colleague the honorable raksha mantri to pay tribute to our jawans and officers who valiantly defend our borders i also express our nation's deep gratitude to the men and women in uniform who helped in rescue relief rehabilitation and reconstruction in the wake of a variety of natural disasters the humanism and efficiency of our armed forces in responding to the tsunami disaster to floods in various parts of our country to cyclones and earthquakes especially the recent quake in jammu and kashmir have made us all proud of our gallant armed forces the security challenge facing india is diverse complex and evolving that is to be expected given our size our location our historical legacy and increasingly our expected role in the emerging multipolar world the end of the cold war increasing global interdependence and the trans border nature of many threats have made strategic concepts developed in a bipolar world somewhat irrelevant the united states is today the dominant economic military technological and cultural power however it can be anticipated that the european union russia china japan and india will consolidate their individual positions to play a global role we must evolve a new paradigm of security cooperation relevant to an emerging multipolar world in which global threats obtain global responses this is precisely what india has sought to do we have entered into strategic partnerships with the united states russia japan and the european union and are pursuing strategic cooperation with china today nations are engaged simultaneously both in competition and cooperation while the international community has made some progress in evolving a rule based order for managing the economic and commercial dimensions of globalization the absence of an effective rule based order in actually felt in addressing contemporary security threats such as terrorism and the increase of weapons of mass destruction simultaneously globalization has sharpened the threat posed to us by instability in both our immediate and our proximate neighborhood along with this we must also be mindful of the desire of extra regional powers to keep us engaged in low intensity conflicts and local problems to weigh us down in a low level equilibrium to meet these challenges based on three broad pillars first to strengthen ourselves economically and technologically second to acquire adequate defense capability with this in perspective india too is reciprocating positively to overtures of other major players in the global balance of power no doubt this involves sophisticated bargaining with each of them it is unrealistic to expect nations to act for altruistic reasons
इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस आर इन द फाइनल एनालिसिस पावर रिलेशंस दिस बैलेंस ऑफ पावर पॉलिटिक्स इन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस इज मोर सोफेस्टिकेटेड दैन ड्यूरिंग द कोल्ड वॉर एरा वी मस्ट लर्न to deal with this new reality and plan our long term security based on a proper appreciation of these evolving trends consequently we should develop friendly interactive relations with as many major powers as possible for the armed forces such interaction should encompass weapon and equipment acquisition joint development of systems and evolution of defense doctrines this will help in securing wider international support when we need it most in the arthashastra kautilya wrote that a healthy economy is a sound foundation for well funded armed forces from the strength of the treasury he said the army is born but it is not only for physical reasons that the health of our economy is important for our national security a healthy growing and stable economy in itself enhances security new notions of comprehensive national power give high weightage to economic social scientific technological educational and cultural aspects of power military strength alone no longer guarantees a nation's security knowledge power and economic capabilities are equally important i am sure that our defense community recognizes that economic progress has enabled accelerated equipment modernization today's international climate enables us to draw on world financial flows for development and to offer our skills in exchange for other countries outsourcing services and manufacturing to india for mutual benefit our armed forces have always been assured that our government will never shy away from finding funds for our defense requirements and i endorse what the defense minister has said in his address it should be obvious however that any government will find it easier to find the required resources if the economy grows faster and generates the incomes and revenues required if our economy grows at 8% per annum it will not be difficult for us to allocate about 3% of our gdp for our national defense this should provide for a handsome defense budget hence our priority is to pursue policies to generate faster economic growth and mobilize more resources critical to our effort to step up the rate of economic growth is the assurance of energy security this requires a broad based energy policy based on rational economic and strategic considerations rational domestic pricing policies etc stop